don't look at me. You're the one who wanted the house painted green. <laughs> Yes, officer. Just coming back from an acid house party, are we, sir? No, officer. Whatever made you think that? Uh, uh... <laughs> hello, hello, hello. This is the Outer Hebrides Broadcasting Corporation calling civilization. More nonsense in a minute, but first it's time for. <laughs> World Affairs. And we eavesdrop on the latest round of Middle East peace talks. <laughs> <laughs> Trouble, trouble time. And friends were expressing fears for Mrs. Thatcher's sanity when she was spotted having high-level talks with former Green Party spokesman, David Icke. <laughs> Dog news, and we exclusively reveal the obnoxious new breed that everyone wants barred. The Pit Bullshit Terrier. If you want to win the next general election for Labour, the best way to do it is to say to the electorate, we will abolish nuclear power. Fun and frolics, and we've got an exclusive interview with the island of Lewis's most popular kissagram girl. <laughs> <laughs> Some news just in of a stunning sporting comeback. George Best is back on the bench at Windsor Park. <laughs> <laughs> Medical scandal. And we know where the sweetie makers really get those bits they put on top of a walnut whip. <laughs> That's over now. Thank you, Ma. This place is kind of empty. Not for long. The Greyhound from Tulsa will be here any minute. You can't close up early, can you? No. My dad would kill me if he found out. Come on, Lucy. Pepsi here. Must be the next one. <laughs> 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 it's Mother's birthday, Simolo. Have you got some presents yet? Yes, I'm just working on it now, Miriam. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just fitting the electrodes. <laughs> electrodes? Is it an electric blanket? God's got to know, Miriam. She's already got an electric blanket. <laughs> what is it then? It's, uh, an electric chair. <laughs> now, don't prejudge it, Miriam. Just think of the advantages. I mean, no more hypothermia. And think of the money we'll save on bake foil. We only need the bake foil when she's fallen over and lain for a couple of hours. When you've evilly forced both her legs down a single hole of her drawers while she's dozing. In her half and all. Nonsense. I treat your mother with the respect she deserves. I mean, I made her a walking stick, the I? Yes. Look at it. Now, yeah, what's the matter with it? It's got a caster on the end. <laughs> There's going to be a tragedy in this house one day soon, Bernard, and you'll be the man responsible. That is a diabolical slur. I have no axe to grind vis-a-vis -vis your mother. I mean, I worship the ground she walks on. <laughs> I find that a very dubious statement, coming from someone who smeared the soles of her slippers with KY jelly. <laughs> <laughs> all right, then. All right, I admit it. A hater. A hater, a hater, a hater! But why? Because, because I resent that I resent the Svengali-like influence she wields over you, Miriam. I mean, it, it's unhealthy. There's nothing unhealthy about my mother. Why, that woman's been like a father to me. <laughs> Face it, Miriam. We will never be happy until she dies. Happy. I mean, can't you see that? Happy! What sort of word is that to use in my slip? <laughs> have you been drinking, Bernard? Yes, I have. I've been sitting in here, pulling it to my wire, and I have tasted the heady brew of freedom, Miriam. Connect with me, connect with me. <laughs> oh, 
Once your mother's earth, you will yield to me, Miriam. I am the Walt Whitman of Didcot Drive. <laughs> I will sing your body electric. <laughs> Time you had a power cut. Ah! 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 I'll send mother your best wishes. <sighs> oh, tell the bitch to roast in hell. And there's no need to have the light on during the day, Bernard, especially as we didn't get the shares. <laughs> No, Miriam, no! Ah! <laughs> then you must sit there sizzling, at least have the window open. <laughs> to make the neighbours think we can afford a barbecue set. Say a final farewell to Wilberforce T, a much loved man who will be sadly missed by us all. Congratulations, Mrs. Smith. It's a get up. Although since the birth, Brenda has been troubled with terrible postnatal depression. Oh, I'm terribly sorry to hear that, Brenda. Oh, I'm not Brenda. It's the baby's depressed, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's not me. Well, I'd just like to talk about my marriage, if I may. Uh, yes, I do have one of my own. Um, I used to have someone else's, but he wouldn't get divorced, so I lost interest. <laughs> Just after he did, actually. Anyway, um, I have to say, I'm very grateful uh, to be married, and uh, so was my husband. I mean, a thousand pounds up front just for saying, I do, seems a good wheeze. <laughs> Not that he does very often, but then my family don't care about my sex life just as long as I'm married. <laughs> um, no, you see, being single in our family is a bit like admitting to watching Catchword. It's just not done. But um, eventually I decided to meet them halfway and let them advertise um, in the exchange in Mart. Um, <laughs> husband sought for Filipino brides. Um, they threw the Filipino bit just to make me seem more of a bargain. Um, and I must admit, it was very exciting on the big day. You know, I wore my wedding kit. 
he wore his wedding tackle. Uh, well, most of it. Um, only he'd had a prank played on him on his stag night. Uh, I say stag night because he'd lost one of his testicles on the end of an ant club. <laughs> After his mates had stripped him and hung him from a precipice on Mount Snowden for a laugh. <laughs> but it was all very friendly. Um, they gave him a pint of beer laced with antifreeze to cheer him up while they skinned him. <laughs> Very jolly. But um, I had a very quiet hen night, just me, some battery hens and a couple of male strippers. Um, I don't know who did more laying, me or the hens. <laughs> anyway, um, being superstitious, I thought I'd do the whole bit for the wedding. You know, something old, something new, something borrowed, something blue. Um, I couldn't think of anything new, so I just borrowed an old G-string from one of the strippers with some new tassels, which I think looked the part. <laughs> Pity I forgot to put the wedding dress on still. <laughs> Nobody seemed to mind, as long as I was married. That was the main thing. Of course, at the reception, everyone was full of advice, you know, all the aunties buzzing about saying, don't worry, the first few months are the worst. <laughs> which I thought was very positive, but <laughs> wrong. I mean, the first few months were a bit sticky, I grant you, but since then it's been absolutely hellish. Honestly, <laughs> oh, really? Uh, we've tried everything, individual therapy, group therapy, even group therapy. <laughs> <laughs> then we had to go at body massage therapy, for couples only, of course. Although there was a bit of an ugly scene when a couple of singles tried to gate crash, but we soon sussed them out. Now, they gave themselves away by talking to each other and having fun, so it was obvious they weren't married. <laughs> <laughs> at least not to each other. But all this therapy has thrown up the need for compromise. Uh, for instance, one therapist suggested I iron my husband's shirts for him, and I said, fine, but only if he was wearing them at the time. But all the trauma has been worthwhile. For my family because I did finally tie the knot. I won't tell you in what, but the upshot is we're sleeping in separate bedrooms now. <laughs> Mine's at my mother's and his is in intensive care. Cheers. <laughs> Every generation, each imagination produces a master of loquacious oration. Hundreds of thousands of our young people have been ruined to enforce the idle It is time we tackle this problem with courage and with vision. Now we've got Major the Minor, the king of the great one-liner. There is a very long way to go yet. Winston Churchill. Adolf Hitler. A real killer. Benito Mussolini. Franklin Delano Roosevelt. Frankly and boldly. But we have a leader who swings with ease. Billy Graham. Ian Paisley. Oh, yeah. Martin Luther King. I have a dream. John F. Kennedy. Ich bin ein Billionaire. Every now and then, a star is born. This is ground control. Call him Major John. Hilda Thatcher. Fully, gladly, joyfully. Vicky Attenborough. One of the greatest actors. In rhetorical oration and great deliberation, there is no one finer. There are very many things that need discussion. That danger the minor. Thank you very much indeed. The king of the great world liner. I have nothing to say at all. Coming soon to a cinema near you, a film of fear. People facing their worst nightmares come true. A story of terrifying horror. Starting at a cinema near you from Friday, anarachnophobia. <laughs> Archie, how's it going? You'll never believe what I just saw. I just looked up into the sky, and there, hundreds of feet in the air, was Jeremy Beadle. Jeremy Beadle? Hey. Ah, uh, don't worry about that. No, that can easily be explained away. I mean, you've, you've heard of the hole in the ozone layer. Eh? Well, that's the arsehole in the ozone layer. <laughs> It's no use, Father. My mind's made up. 
I'm going to America. Ach, America, that backwater. There's nothing there. And there'll be nothing here soon. Not once the Americans take their submarine bases out of the Holy Loch. I knew it, Katrina. Ever since you won that Miss Wet Periscope competition, the head went turned. And is it any wonder, Mother? I'm young and attractive. I crave excitement. I lie awake at night, dreaming of L.A. L.A.'s a waste of time. I drank 20 cans of the stuff once and I still didn't get belly. <laughs> Oh, there's more to life than getting wellied, Father. This place is so parochial. All people think about is drink and sheep. I, I, what's, what's wrong with sheep? Some of my best friends are sheep. I'm surprised livestock isn't good enough for you anymore. Especially after all that time you've spent recently at those racy farmers' parties in Inverary. <laughs> racy parties in Inverary? In the wild side of Inverary, Father down by that rough dive of a tea room where the debauched elements of the boys' brigade hang out. <laughs> Katrina, is this true? All right, all right. I admit it. You go to racy parties. Oh, michty me. The kind of parties where hip young farm hands throw their tractor keys into the middle of the buyer floor and then the lassies have to bend down and try and pick them up between them. Still? <laughs> oh, no, no. That's enough. America, indeed. If you ask me, lassie, you want your head examined. And in America, I will have my head examined. I'll have an analyst. He'll probe the delicate workings of my animus. You can get that done here. I'll get the vet to put his rubber gloves on. He'll, <laughs> he'll probe the delicate workings of your animus. Uh, yeah, you just don't understand. I need the glamour of America. I long to walk down Fifth Avenue and... Get flapped over the head with a baseball bat. <laughs> I'd like to zoom off to sunny California and lie on the beach and get the trendy skin cancer. <laughs> Good God, you can get the trendy skin cancer here. Holy Loch's just up the road. <laughs> Not for much longer, Father. And that's why I'm preparing to go. There. Now, how do you like my hip new threads, Daddy-o? Katrina, what have you done to your iron jumper? <laughs> I've sewn trendy shoulder pads into it. It's called power dressing. Oh, you don't need the power dressing. Not with the size of the biceps you've got. <laughs> and that's another thing. When I go to America, I'm going to get trendy cosmetic surgery. I'm going to have my biceps nipped and tucked. Oh, Katrina, not your biceps. are your best feature. Oh, I don't want a showing up in Hollywood. Ach, the Hollywood. You'll never get a job there. You're just a jumped-up, talentless wee numpty with a face like a dried-up peat bog. <laughs> well, it didn't do Sheena Easton any harm. <laughs> I see there's no much chance of Robocop driving the Masons with the police force. I'll be at the meeting in a couple of minutes. Okay. Every night we have to put up with it. It's driving.
driving me mad. Throw something at the scare it off then. Good idea. Not bad, not bad. Sorry about that. Still a wee bit wet, you know. I just don't tell them to run out of tiles again. They have that. That's why I never bother washing my hands, you know. <laughs> <laughs> Jim Taggart here. Cut. Mr. Taggart, why are you wearing a raincoat? I always wear a raincoat. It's one of my trademarks. But we're supposed to be on a tropical island. Now, now I want you to come through the door again, and this time I want your costume, your manner, everything about you to suggest that you're a, a, a secret agent working under the burning tropic sun. Ah, oh, right. Right, just through the door, Jim. OK, I'll try again. Action! Phew, <laughs> it's fair bailing out there. Cut. That was lovely, Jim. Okay. Lovely. Now, I want you to stroll nonchalantly to the bar and order your usual. Now, don't forget, you are James Bond. And... Action! Find a lag in a packet of cheese and onion crisps. Don't you mean martini? All right, a pint of martini and a packet of cheese and onion crisps. Cut. That was indescribable, Jim. Indescribable. Now, this is the fight scene. Now, Jaws comes in, you both fight, you roll across the floor, breaking the tables, then you swing across the room on a chandelier, you dash up a flight of steps, you swing across and you s exit by smashing through a plate glass window. Aye, uh, that'll be shining bright. <laughs> <laughs> have no fear. You'll have a stuntman for the difficult bits. Oh. And... Action! Well, go on. Say your line. Do you say that have a stunt man for a difficult bit? <laughs> now listen, the suggestion that horse doping is going on in these stables is utterly ridiculous. A slander. Isn't that right, Ponga? the curtains <laughs> and the cutlery began to disappear <laughs> but when it developed a taste for small dogs the neighbors began to complain <laughs> through the congregation, waving a black chicken round his head! <laughs> and then the three-year-old girl gave birth to four adult guinea pigs. <laughs> 